Hello, I'm Oliver Berkman, and I'm the author of the book, 4,000 Weeks. One of the arguments I try to make in the book is that a big reason so many of us struggle with time, and specifically with this feeling that we're never quite getting around to the things that matter the most to us, it's because we spend our lives chasing this feeling of mastery or control over our time uh, that, in fact, we're never going to achieve. So we want to become the kind of people who can stay on top of everything, who can uh, handle any obligation that might be thrown at us, who have all sorts of time in the day to pursue other ambitions or to you know, implement great uh, morning routines or habits that we think will make us into better people. Or we want a certain kind of confidence and control about the future. We want to know that, like, okay, we know how things are headed here and we're in control of how things are going to unfold. But the truth is that we are finite humans with incredibly limited time in a world of infinite inputs, infinite possibilities, there'll always be another email, uh, there'll always be another obligation. And similarly, we can't actually have any idea what's going to happen next week, next month, really even next minute, however much we w wish we had that, that feeling of control. So I argue that if we sort of acknowledge this and, and face our finitude and drop back down into reality. It's not a counsel of despair. You know, it's not a reason for thinking that you can never do anything good in life. Actually, it's the opposite. It, it's exactly how to start doing some good and meaningful things in life, because you get to put aside this impossible quest to uh, get your life in working order with regard to time and just focus instead on doing a few things, not everything, but a few things uh, that really count. OK, so how could you implement this in your day to day life? Uh, three suggestions. One of them is to give up this futile quest to clear the decks. Uh, I know a lot of us and me for many years, you know, we spend our working day. We come in, we think I'll just get all these emails and all these little annoying things that are tugging at my attention. We'll just get them out of the way first. And then there'll be this beautiful expanse of time and focus to really get stuck in to what counts the most. It never happens again because the decks will never be clear. And actually, it's worse than that. As I talk about in the book, um, the act of trying to clear the decks makes them fill up again faster. So the only way to handle the situation is to surrender, to say, I'm not going to try to clear the decks before I get stuck in to something important. I'm going to start the day with an hour, two hours, three hours. It doesn't need to be vast. Um, but first, focusing on something that I know really matters to me uh, and will really sort of move the needle, as they say. And then later in the day, sure, I'm going to nominate a fixed amount of time. Maybe it's an hour, maybe it's two hours, when I'm going to turn to all those other um, debt clearing things. Only I'm not going to think that I'm going to get to the end of them. I'm not going to actually try to clear the decks. I'm just going to work on them for a while. In other words, it's less like trying to climb up to the summit of a mountain. And then you're like, I've done it all. It's much more like gardening, right? Where you um, water the plants every day, and you sort of turn, keep the soil turned over, but you don't Im imagine that you're ever going to finish it. You just, you just uh, maintain it. You just, you just make sure you pay attention to it uh, for a small amount of time on a regular basis. Second idea is to think of your life in terms of domains, right? Maybe there's work, uh, home, maybe fitness and exercise and health, whatever. And then uh, pick only one big goal in each domain at a time that you're going to focus on and that you won't move on to others until that one is complete. So say you've got like four big home improvement projects that you think are all really important. You're going to make much more progress on them if you completely give up hope of making any progress on three of them for now while you focus on one and see it through to completion and then move on to another. We don't like thinking in this way, right? Because it feels uncomfortable. Neglecting stuff feels uncomfortable because when we can tell ourselves that we've got, got a finger in every pie, we're taking care of business, it's all ticking over, it feels like we're achieving this control, this mastery over our time. But it doesn't work. What actually happens is you sort of dissipate your energy over uh, all the projects and um, it, you get make less progress. And then finally, third tip I would say is to embrace what I and other people have called the joy of missing out. We hear all the time uh, these days about the fear of missing out, which is this idea that thanks partly to technology, we're always aware of and tormented by um, all the events we could be at instead of the one that we're at, all the people we could be dating, all the jobs we could be working in. And so we never get to really wholeheartedly commit and enjoy um, what we're doing because of all these uh, other tormenting possibilities.
But the implication in the idea of the fear of missing out is that you might be able to somehow uh, get over it and, and not miss out on things. Whereas what I want to say is that uh, missing out is completely unavoidably inevitable. You don't need to fear it because it's guaranteed. Uh, if you're a finite human in an effectively infinite world, every decision to do anything with an hour of your day is automatically a decision to miss out on a million other things. And if you can glimpse this, pos this, this fact a little bit more, if you can fall into this way of thinking, it, it's incredibly liberating and energizing because you come to see that when you decide to do something consciously with an hour of your life or a day of your life, knowing that you're inevitably neglecting all sorts of other things, many of which might be really important, it's kind of like an affirmation. You're sort of saying, you know what? I, I choose to uh, spend the afternoon uh, taking my kid to the playground or I choose to spend this evening reading this novel that uh, I really want to read. And, and I'm very deliberately saying, you know, I'm a finite human. I can only do so much. And it actually lends more meaning to the experience that you put a stake in the ground and say, uh, I can't do more than one thing with this time. And this is the thing I choose to do. So anyway, there's, there's much more in the book, of course. Um, and I really hope you enjoy reading it.